When it comes to editing your YouTube videos, you are spending so much time doing things that are massively slowing down your edit. So we are gonna talk about optimizing the process of editing your YouTube videos in terms of what should you do first, what should you do second, and so on. And in addition to that, I've also got three additional things that are gonna really shave off some time for you when it comes to editing your videos. And we're starting right now. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the structure of your editing process. And for the information I'm gonna be sharing with you, you can do this in any video editing software or app. But for this video, I'm going to be giving you a demonstration in terms of the concepts inside of Camtasia, which is a super easy to use video editing and screen recording software. So high five and fist bump to Camtasia for sponsoring this video. I'll put a link to them down in the description with a discount attached to it so you can check them out for yourself. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna talk about is what's called the first pass. The first pass is where you grab your main footage, you pull that into your editing software, and then you start putting the core of the video together. The core or main content of the video is typically called your A roll. And I'm telling you that now because we're gonna be talking about B roll later. So make sure as we progress through this video that you remember what A roll is. But in the case of this video that you're watching right now, the A roll is when I'm on screen and I'm sitting here talking to you. If you're a gaming channel, depending on how you're structuring the content, your A roll could be the gameplay footage itself. Or if you are prominent in the frame to where you're not just in that little window down in the corner, then in that particular case, if you're fully taking up the frame, then you could also be the A-roll. For whatever type of content you make, the idea is to think the main footage or your primary footage, the core of it. Like I mentioned before, that is your A-roll. So what you wanna do is you wanna bring that into your editing software and you wanna start pulling in all of those clips or the one main clip into your timeline, your video editing software. Keep in mind, this is the first pass. So once you have those clips or once you have the main clip in your timeline, you wanna go through and you wanna start cutting out all the spaces in between words, any of the mistakes that you made during the video and so on. And look, keep in mind the purpose of this first pass is so that you can identify these are the parts of the video I'm going to be using, these are the parts of the video that I need to cut out or that I'm not going to be using. Next, we go to the second pass. Now with the second pass, this is where you go in and you start polishing things up. So as an example, this is where you go through and you start cutting out your ums and your ahs. You start tightening up the space between clips. If you do L cuts or J cuts, then in that case, this is where you start implementing some of those things. So what you're doing right now in this second pass is you're getting everything tighter and you're making it more of a piece of content than just a bunch of clips that are thrown together from the first pass. So now, what we've done so far is we've went through the first pass, which is pulling all of the clips in and getting them organized on the timeline, figuring out what you're gonna use and what you're not. And the second pass where you're starting to tighten everything up. Next, you wanna add your B-roll videos. Now your B-roll videos are any supplemental footage that you add on top of your A-roll footage. Remember before where I said that it's important to remember A-roll? This is why. When it comes to adding the B-roll footage, the reason that you wanna have that first and second pass done before you do this is because you're gonna start layering up your tracks. You're gonna start really layering layering up your timelines. And when you do that, things can start getting really complicated if you need to cut out a really small sliver of a clip and then move everything around. So because of that, when you have those types of things done first, then it makes this B-roll part of the video really easy because then you can just drop in the videos that you need and then adjust them as necessary. As a really quick pro tip for you, if you're somebody that adds title graphics to your videos or somebody that uses graphics in your videos in any capacity, it can be really helpful to speed up the process here in just a little bit if you have a a full screen red image that you can drop into your editing software. And the reason for that is because as you're going through your editing process, when you identify an area in your video that you're going to be adding graphics to later, you can just put that red image in that spot. So then you can zoom out on your timeline and you know exactly where those things go to. So you can jump to them when you start adding graphics in your videos. Which brings me to the next part of the process, which is adding your graphics to your videos. If you're using lower thirds, in screen, Screens, any type of title slides or graphics anywhere in your videos, if you did what I talked about just a second ago and you have those red spots, now what you do is you go through and you look for those red placeholders and you go and you add graphics to those particular areas. So for this, since you identified those during the B-roll process, what you can do is you can jump right into those. You don't have to scrub through the video and try to find those areas because you did that in the previous step. So jump to those parts of the video and add whatever graphics you need. The next part of the process is audio detailing or sound design, depending on the level that you wanna take it. This is where you add like those whoosh sound effects and things like that for anything that might be moving in your videos. This is also where you adjust for any audio inconsistencies as well. And one of the really cool things about this software that I'm using right now, which is Camtasia, is they actually have an audio leveling feature built into the software, which is pretty 
pretty awesome. This is also where if you process your audio in any capacity, this is where you do that part of the process. This is also where you add music, but here's another tip for you. Before you add any sound effects or music to your video, if you're somebody that talks on video or you're doing voiceovers or whatever, process your vocal audio first. And the reason that you wanna do that is because if you add all these different sound effects and music tracks that are changing throughout the video and things like that, and then you process your audio, your audio is most likely gonna come out a lot more full, maybe even louder. Because of that, you'll have to go through and then make readjustments to all the things that you added to it. So because of that, process your audio first, then add sound effects, then add music. The next step is polishing up your video. So when it comes to polishing up your video, what you wanna do is you want to do any type of color correction that you do to your video. You wanna make any final adjustments to your audio. Depending on the type of content you make, this might also be where you add any type of special effects or anything like that that you need to the content. And one thing I do wanna say really quick, because I do know that a lot of new content creators watch my videos. So you may or may not know, that's why I'm sharing this, that content creators actually color grade or they color correct their videos. So when you look at a video and it just kind of pops, the reason for that is because they went through the process of color correcting the content. It's usually not what you see right out of the camera. That's usually not what you end up seeing by the time it gets uploaded to YouTube. For example, this right here is what my videos look like directly out of the camera. And this is what it looks like after we've added a little bit of color grading to it to make it pop. If you're already aware of those things, no big deal, but I just wanted to show you that just in case you weren't aware so that you could start to apply those sorts of things to your videos as well if it's something you're interested in. Now let's get into some things you can do to speed up this process even more. The very first thing is to create an editing template. What an editing template is, is it's one file that you make, you start with the blank file and you drop in any lower thirds that you commonly use, any in-screen graphics you commonly use. If you have any subscribe call to actions or anything like that that you commonly use, you drop them in there. Even if you have sound effects you use on a regular basis, you wanna drop those in there as well so that when it comes time to add those to your project, you don't have to go and hunt them down on your computer because they're already in the project. You just have to grab them and slide them into the right place. Camtasia actually has library assets for this to where everything's like built into Camtasia, which is pretty awesome. But if you're not using Camtasia, you can build this into your template file. Another thing about setting up templates and presets is you can also do the same thing for color. So if you are somebody that records in a similar environment all the time, you can go ahead and make a color preset, export it as something that's called a LUT or a lookup table, and then you can just apply it to your video without having to go in and fine tune everything all the time. Next, have a folder on your computer with common video assets inside of it. There's there's going to be the things that you use a lot, and then there's gonna be the things that you use from time to time. So when you have that folder and you have common assets in there, you know, certain songs that you like, maybe certain graphics that you use from time to time, but not all the time and so on. If you have those in a very specific place, then it makes it really easy to find them because everything's there. So when you open up your editing software, you can open up that folder and then you're good to go if you do need anything within that folder. The next thing when it comes to editing videos that can really speed things up for me is focus. It is so easy to spend hours looking for that perfect song or it's so easy to spend hours looking for those perfect stock videos. It's also easy to check your messages and to have your Facebook open or whatever other messaging services that you use, having them open while you're editing. You have friends constantly hitting you up, you know, just having small talk and whatnot. And you don't want to be a jerk, but at the same time, you got to get your stuff done. So because of that, when you go to edit your videos, shut all that stuff down, silence your phone, close down any browsers or any software in your computer where somebody can contact you and just focus on your video editing. Doing these things will help you make the best videos as fast as you possibly can. And look, if you want to learn more about video editing for YouTube, click into this playlist right here. And if you want to learn more about growing your YouTube channel, head over to my videos page on my channel and check out all the videos that I have there for you that will help you grow your YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.